Example 2.5. For Massa Plastics has major fabrication plants in Texas and Hong Kong. The president wants to know the equivalent future worth of $1 million capital investments each year for eight years starting one year from now. For Massa Capital earns at a rate of 14% per year. Okay, so first of all, it starts off by saying that they want to know the equivalent future worth. So you immediately know that you are looking for F. So in this case, F, oops, F will be equal to your unknown. Uh, it's a future worth of $1 million capital investments. Okay, but then it says each year. So these investments are not just done once in a lifetime. They're annual investments. So therefore, your A is going to be $1 million per year. So they're investing each year. If it didn't have the each year, just $1 million capital investment, then it could be a P. But if it says each year, that means that it's annual. So that's why it's an A. For eight years, so N is eight years, and then the rate is I equals... 14% per year. Okay. So let's draw the diagram. Going to have eight years here. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know that, let's start with the A first. We know that they're gonna start investing. It says starting one year from now, so it's telling you right there that it must be an A. So you have all of your investments starting in year one. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you're gonna have eight investments of one million. Your A will be equal to 1 million. I put it as an M just to save up some space and zeros. So it's 1 million per year. And then after all of these investments, where is your F going to be? When is the future worth going to be calculated? Okay, so every time you have a series of equal payments, then your F will go at the very end. I remember that we went over these rules already in chapter one, uh, and the F has to be occurring in the same year or in the same time period as the last A cash flow. So I'm just gonna put this for your notes here. Uh, both of the rules that we learned, the first thing that the first a starts in year one. So you may go back to the videos from chapter one to review this, because remember that if we had a P here, then the P would go in year zero. So the P has to go one year prior to the first A. In this problem, we do not have a P, but we still have to have our uh, complete cycle or our entire year prior to the first day. Okay, and then over here, okay, so the last A, uh, we can say that it ends, ends the series uh, in the same period as F. So yes, you should have two arrows in year number eight, one for the A and one for the F. They do not necessarily have to be going in opposite ways, but if you were to put them going to the same um, side, then you still have to have the two arrows. So you can have like one on top of the other. Okay, so now let's solve the problem. We said that we are looking for F, so we're gonna go the easy way. Uh, we're looking for F and we have A given. So if we go to our notes, we have also in section 2.2, .2, 
uh, still the uniform series factors, we have 1 to find f given a. And we have the formula, we have the notation, and we have the Excel function. But then again, the easiest way would be the notation. That's the one that we're going to be using the most. So let's go with that one. So we said that f is going to be equal to a, which is 1 million. And then the factor find f given a at 14 percent and this is going to be for eight years okay, so it's one million let's look up the factor in our tables so we have to use a 14 percent table okay, so I have it here then we look for the column find f given a which is this one and we go and find eight years so this is the intersection of the row and the column and it's going to be 13.23276 so we plug it in here 13.23276 and the answer will be 13,000 I mean, thirteen million two hundred and thirty-two thousand eight hundred dollars. And if you do it with the formula or the Excel function, you will get uh, an amount that's very close to this one.